Hi, this is Morgan again. Part two of the two-part series on vertical geothermal earth tubes. In part one, I described how they work and uh, gave some performance on my pilot system. But just to reiterate, uh, in this system, you basically dig a series of wells, <clears throat> in my case, to about 12 feet. With a blower, you're going to pump air down a, uh, down a pipe down the tube, cold air in this case, and running the wintertime. Warm air uh, is then transferred up the hole. You get heat transfer uh, down at the bottom of the, of the tubes where the uh, uh, below the frost line where the earth temperature doesn't vary that much. So the <clears throat> why are we doing this? Here's a plot of uh, of uh, temp ground temperature at different depths uh, throughout the year. So as you can imagine, the low point over here is. Uh, in the middle of the winter, we've got uh, depths ranging from essentially at the surface, 2 feet deep, 5 feet deep, 12 feet deep. And uh, I don't know exactly where this was taken, but um, notice that at 12 feet depth, what I've drilled my wells to actually, the average temperature in this, in this area is about 52 degrees with pretty minimal variations throughout the year. If you only dig your holes to uh, 5 feet deep, you're... you're um, much much cooler during the winter, much warmer during the summer. So you, so it's a big advantage of going to a vertical uh, earth tube system versus a horizontal system, which is typically buried no deeper than four to eight feet. So here's the parts list for uh, my earth tube. <clears throat> On the left, we've got uh, uh, things that were used to build the actual downhole apparatus. Got uh, foil tape, which is not strictly speaking necessary but it's nice to have duct tape you got to have it I've got uh, a landscaping drain pipe both a uh, about a 15 foot piece I don't have a 25 foot piece and I've got a, a T and I have a uh, 90 cubic foot per minute 12 watt uh, booster fan that fits inside a 4 inch uh, duct I've got uh, wood and bricks for building up a little uh, kind of a, a vent area uh, where the hot air is going to go around my earth tube, the top of it. I've got my Seymour post hole auger that I use to drill the wells, and then I've got the uh, four inch sections of black pipe and the coupling that I use to extend the uh, depth of that post hole auger so I can drill. In theory, I could drill up to 20 feet, but I hit bedrock at 12. So here's how I built my system. I essentially first started by excavating out a little bit of a little valley here um, that we're going to use. It's going to let us lay the pipe um, sort of below ground level and let us move the air in and out. And I dug two holes to uh, 12 foot depth. Using the landscape drain pipe, I constructed an apparatus kind of like this. It's got uh, uh, one entry point where the blower sits and then uh, about two five-foot sections that go down each well. Next, I add the uh, in the duct blower fan and put a, a cover over the over the trench. When we run the blower, it takes uh, cool air, injects it down into the uh, wells. As that air is moved deeper into the well, it uh, if it's cold, then it heats up, essentially achieves the ambient uh, temperature downhole, which here in Denver, Colorado is probably around 50 degrees most times of the year. could be about 47 right now, as you saw from my previous video. But that warmed air then tends to come up the annulus of the well and eventually goes out to a, to a single outlet port. And notice how I've got thermometers mounted on either side, both the inlet and the outlet, so I can measure uh, kind of how the thing's performing. I found, uh, if you watched part one, uh, I found that uh, putting a, uh, an aluminum or otherwise metal tube in the deepest part of the hole, so essentially you, know, you tape it together and you tape it to the black, to the drainage pipe, um, what it does is it, it moves air to the very bottom of the hole where the air is the um, uh, closest and the warmest. And uh, by being aluminum, you get maximum heat transfer between the air, between the cold air coming down and the warm air. Uh, in the in the earth tube, so a good uh, good heat uh, good uh, heat exchanger really helps the performance of the uh, earth tubes.
Here's the actual, uh, what the cans look like when I tape them together. You see I've got about, uh, I think, 11 or 12 soda cans taped together with a foil tape. That's pipe number one. Of course, I had to, uh, with a pair of tin snips, I had to laboriously cut the, uh, cut the, uh, each end off. Uh, really wish I could have found an easier way to do that. Maybe, maybe a, a saw. It's kind of, kind of hard to do, actually. Um, and then on the, on the uh, right-hand side, you can see there's a, made out of, out of soup cans, which are a little bit easier to work with. Um, I made a similarly, slightly shorter tube. So here's the whole rig when it's uh, laid out. I quite, haven't quite put it down on the ground yet, and I've, I've only taped one of the heat exchangers to the uh, to, to the to the uh, downhole assembly. But you can see I've got the uh, the blower fan up on the upper left. It tees off and goes down to the two wells, and you can see that those two holes have been drilled over here. And I've got bricks all around in order to uh, um, kind of. Seat the, seat the thing uh, underground level. So here's what it looks like on the right hand side when I, I take the rig and I lay it into its, uh, into its little uh, um, depression there. And finally I cover it up using scraps of wood and, and, and stone. It isn't meant to be pretty, it's just a, just a test product. But uh, and you can see I've got inlet thermometers at the inlet, thermometer at the outlet, and that's it.